This is a podcast of Nathan, Nat and Sean. Let's go. There's only five more sleeps till election day, so we're nearly there, gang. Um, and then on Bill the week- hall. on the yeah. weekend, officially, the Liberal Party launched their campaign. That's right, and the Seems guy a bit late. <laughs> who cannot get enough of it, who is just warming up, apparently, is our Prime Minister Scott Morrison. Hi, Prime Minister. Good morning. What, Good morning, can, Prime can Minister. Can I ask you a question about that? Why? I don't understand because I know Labor only launched like, like a week before. Why, after we've been campaigning for five weeks already, do you launch your campaign on the weekend? Well, it's just what we've done for many years. And, and one of the reasons for that is, you know, yeah, the campaign has been long. But um, what we also know is, is that you get close to the election campaign. That's when people really start to switch on and really start to focus on it. And as, as people are now voting, um, particularly with pre-poll, and uh, we'll be voting next Saturday. We just want to make sure that people have a very clear understanding of what we're putting forward at this election. And, uh, and yesterday, um, we made it very clear that we want to see Australians own their own home. We don't want the government to own it. We want you to own it. And we want you to be able to use your own money, your own superannuation that you earned, uh, that you should have the choice about how you deal with that. And the way we've done it means that you can both get access to your super, but also preserve your super in the longer term. So when you go into retirement... Um, you've got the benefit of it having invested in your own home, your own, your own home, and your super savings are preserved. Uh, The other thing we did yesterday is we said for those downsizing later in life, that means more properties are going to be freed up, uh, particularly in established areas where people are selling those homes, so there's more of them available for young families and others to be able to buy. So we're working both sides of the problem to ensure that people can own their own home and there can be more housing stock for people to get access to. Prime Minister, I've seen it over the last couple of weeks, and I understand what you're saying. Everyone's got policies for different areas, no worries at all. The one thing that's really got me over this campaign over the last all the weeks has been seeing um, two grown men almost just yelling at each other at various times and name-calling. It, se- it seemed like it seemed childish to me. Well, politics is a choice, and people have got to make a choice about who they want to run the country. I've, the simple point I've made about my opponent is that he doesn't have the same experience and when it comes to managing the economy, it's just frankly a bit loose. And then a couple of weeks ago, he couldn't even tell you what the unemployment rate was or the interest rates were. And you just can't afford to be that tailless and on the economy. It's a, it's a difficult job. I know. I've been doing it. And uh, I've been a treasurer before that. I know how important is managing the economy. And so it is, yes, about the risk of labour. But what I was saying yesterday is the policies we have in place the opportunities we have ahead uh, for Western Australia that have done incredibly well during the pandemic, supported by the federal government all the way when it came to the economic supports, uh, the supports for health, um, which is ensured we've all come through this together. Now we have to seize those opportunities. It's why, you know, we've always been seeking to support services as well. Healthcare, the the comprehensive cancer centre there in Perth, which I announced some weeks ago, announced another one up here in Brisbane yesterday. You know, making sure people get those essential services, supporting Medicare. The only way you do that is if you know how to run an economy. And if you haven't got that experience, then you're risking it going worse, not better. But we spoke about this last time, and you bring up um, when Anthony Albanese got that statistic wrong. Someone gets, get, slipping up and getting a statistic wrong in front of the press is not the fact that their party does not know what they're doing because it's just a slip-up. You've done it in the past as well. No, so I just I'm don't sorry, get I'm... how... You you, you you shoot each other down for just slips of the tongue when you know that that's not... The party, of course, will know what they're doing. Mm. It's just... No, I'm sorry, I, I don't agree. I but mean, you've I mean, done I've it. Been, uh, no, I'm sorry, I, I've always known what the unemployment rate is. I'm not talking I've about the unemployment rate. rate, I'm talking about when you're, fr- when, when you're, when you're facing um, pressure in front of the press and when just so- there is a slip of the tongue and then you guys jump on each other... Like, you've done it before, yeah. so why is it okay for no. you to do it but not for him? No, I'm sorry. When it comes to knowing what's going on with unemployment, this is one of the most fundamental things you need to know, but they would know as a Prime Minister. It's no, just I'm a sorry, slip of the tongue. No, no, no it wasn't but a But that, slip that of the information tongue. would be he easily no obtainable yes. if, if no, you but, needed it, surely. The, the, point, the point is not the pop quiz. The point is that he hadn't even understood that almost 200,000 extra people had got into a job over the course of the pandemic and over the course of the government, which had seen unemployment fall to 4%. He thought it was somewhere up around where it was when we came to government. He didn't know what was going on in the economy. And that's really serious. Well, I guess the question is whether or not voters think that's important. And, and yes. Well, that's true. And I don't think I don't. that... 
people care as much as you think they care about that. Yeah, I'm getting a statistic. Well, well, yeah, I, that's I right. That, that is easily obtainable if you need it. If you're no, in charge, sorry, you're going to look it up, surely. No, but that's not the point. The point is not knowing what was going on in the economy. It's not the specific figure. If he'd said 4.1 or 4.2, well, I think you've got a good point. He thought it was up in the, in, in the mid-fives. Now, that is very different. It means that even instinctively, intuitively, he didn't have the yeah. faintest I, idea where it was. To be fair, and I think that you're placing that more that importance on that and using that as a way to distract from other more important things. Voters care more about yes. the environment, uh, which, you know, to be fair, well, I don't think that well, you've shown well, I, well, many All policies. I do know is people need jobs. People need to be able to yeah. pay their mortgages. People need to run small businesses they've invested their life savings and are risking their own home on. And the economy, um, in supporting wages to rise because of the, the strength of the economy and getting unemployment down, how you run your economy determines how much you can do to support the important programs in the environment. We've got $22 billion invested in developing the clean energy technology and other technologies which will enable us to meet our commitment of net zero by 2050. Now, you can't do any of that if you're not running a strong economy. You can talk about it all you like. You can talk about healthcare all you like. But if you can't run a strong economy, you can't manage money and run your budget, well, you can't do any of those things. There's a reason why Australia has been able to reduce our emissions by about 20%, far more than New Zealand or Canada, many times over. It's because we've been able to invest in the programs which turn that around. See, in politics, it isn't just about what you say you're going to do. It's about knowing how to do it. And that's what our government has done through the pandemic. We've got the economy through. We've set up the opportunities in manufacturing. We've got 220,000 Australians at trade training right now, the highest we've ever seen for apprentices. We've also got a trillion dollars have... worth of debts, Prime Minister, yes, that the next generation are going to be paying, probably the one after that. Right. Like, you know, and, that, that's a and, lot. Like, it's come at a cost. True. It's come at it a has, massive and, cost. That's right. And if we hadn't invested in JobKeeper, if we hadn't invested in JobKeeper, you know what the answer would have been. You may not very yeah. well be yep. on this But also JobKeeper right made people yes. like, you know, uh, very, Jerry Harvey yes, from Harvey Norman rich. enormously rich and he didn't even it need it in the end. He made so driver. much money and well, didn't we'll pay it back. Have dis- we'll have to agree to disagree what, on this point because, remember, JobKeeper wasn't paid to companies. JobKeeper was paid to individuals. There was not one cent that went to To qualify the for it, it, the company had yes. to show a 30% loss and That's we right. know that he made an enormous, enormous profit. Yeah. But every single cent that went to all of those companies was paid to employees. Every single cent. Every single cent. See, what we did with job... Yeah, but he could have afforded to pay his own employees, mm. is my point. What, 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 what we know is, is during the course of the pandemic, there was no way that we were going to be able to pay everybody social security through the government system. There was just too many people. Millions and millions more were coming onto the system. And so what we did was, is we paid that social security through the companies. It was a very clever idea. It was a smart idea. It was. It, it gave the country... It was. It was. Right? And a lot of people so. benefited from it, but also yes. a lot of, a lot of very that, rich people well, benefited all, from, that, from that it as saved well. The, that saved the country. Yeah. So I'm on that as an absolute positive. I know you're going hard at these companies. Those companies yeah. in particular, they are the ones that need to be shamed and pay yeah. back the government. Well, and and some have. Made, yeah, and made others that did money, it. They yeah. That's right. Yeah, but, but as far as the job keeper yeah. goes... Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. So those companies have made so much money and haven't paid it back. Why aren't they accountable for that? They, they pay tax every single year. They employ yeah. Australians every <laughs> single year. Um, they, they, they pay your wages. They pay everybody's wages, the companies. I mean, that's where you get wages from, by companies doing well. And it's important that as we came through this pandemic that our economy stayed intact because if it didn't, we'd be like so many other countries in the world. You know, there's almost 400,000 more people in work today than before the pandemic. We've had a stronger employment growth performance than the United States, the United Kingdom, Germany, France, Italy, Canada, Japan, all of those countries Australia has performed better than through our economy because of the policies that we put in place. And I've got to say, JobKeeper, the cash flow boost, it saved the Australian economy. It saved Australia. All right, Prime Minister, I know you're super busy. We thank you for your time. Thanks very much, guys. All the best. Nathan, Nat and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.